Stop and take a moment to contemplate and realize that in order to perceive darkness, there must be light. You are that light. Hello and namaste, dear friends and internet family. It is Friday, December 10th, coming at you bright and early. 6.26 6.26 in the morning, Pacific Standard Time. Greetings and salutations, and welcome to the Almost Daily Zencast. Take a moment to unburden yourself and chill with DJ Z and myself. Take a moment to unburden yourself from all the garbage, nonsense malarkey that's weighing down on you. Just set it aside. Take a deep cleansing breath and remember who the fuck you really are. Remember who you are. Don't let anyone tell you what to be. Namaste, folks. Welcome to the show. How are you doing this fine Friday morning? I hope you're doing better than you were doing last week better than you were doing last year, etc. The world is indeed a dark and desperate place. And it is, in fact, easy to forget that we are the sources of the light. But the time of remembering is upon us, friends. As perhaps it has always been. It is uh, my humble opinion, based on a lifetime of experience and seeking, that the following must be so. In order to wake oneself up completely, one must help all other beings to wake up. 
Now, this is counterintuitive, as a lot of the postmodern spirituality, uh, mainstream talking points are about focusing on oneself. No one's coming to help you. You have to pick yourself up. And those things are indeed, dear friends, very true. Trump is not going to fix it all himself. Biden is not going to rescue America. No singular politician can solve a problem created by the multitudes of uh, humanity and the way we have chosen to interact. And while this is true and can sound a bit overwhelming and a bit desperate, or it may, it may, it may cause feelings of desperation, there's also a hidden truth that doesn't get discussed as often, I find, and that is, in fact, critical to our understanding of the spiritual calling before us. And that's that we can help each other. We've, we've thrown that gem out in the coal bucket, to make up a phrase. We've thrown that baby out with the bathwater to bring up uh, a medieval phrase that has lingered quite a bit. Because no one is an island of solitude unto themselves. That's the problem in the world today. There's a lot of finger pointing going on, right? A lot of people going, it's their fault. Those people causing all the problems. Whoever they are, they're the ones to be held accountable. But there's a huge flaw in that us versus them programmatic thinking. Those people over there are you. They're just in different monkey suits. Those people over there that you're being indoctrinated to despise and vilify are you in a different vessel body avatar. They are you in a different life history context bubble. They are you in a different ambulatory meat sack of blood and bone. And the only thing that separates us from them is the indoctrination that there must be a separation between us and them. And the idealization, the ideation, uh, and the, the turning into an ideology, the notion of our separateness. At all costs, um, intended to design to ignore at all costs, all that unites us. This, this lie that we've been suffering the consequences of for centuries, that we are itty-bitty isolated and alone, separate members of a species limited and bound by the mundane boundaries of materialist uh, world, cosmological worldview. Now, the the phenomenological experienced lived reality says otherwise. But the tricky bit is the catch all upon which this all hangs is that our minds will attempt to make as true as possible that which we have invested the power of belief in. That's why belief is so important. That's why belief is so coveted. That's a word that you're not supposed to engage in. You're not supposed to covet your neighbor's wife, your neighbor's objects, your neighbor's wisdom. You're not supposed to covet. And yet, in order to wake oneself up completely, one must help all other beings to wake up. Now, the moment you take on 
an ego-driven, I am the savior, holier than thou, do as I say, attitude, you've lost it all. So that disqualifies a lot of people from being worthy of admiration, being worthy of investing belief in. But we don't, we don't filter, we don't test for that. People threw their blind faith at Donald Trump because he spoke differently than the systematically corrupt politicians that that demographic was burnt out on. And he spoke to their lower natures. He spoke to their ego drive. He spoke to their demons inside clamoring to get out. And free will lets us. We have that God-given free will to do bad and to call it good. But the, the irony is, the paradox is, and, and hear me out on this, because I think it's important. I think it's important for all of us to process, to internalize, to integrate, and to share this idea. Not because I came up with it. I don't know that I came up with it. But because my guides and, and ancestors uh, and, and spirit totems are telling me to, are guiding me towards sharing this. And that's this. Follow me out. Hear me out on this. What is the one thing that true villains all do in common? It's not an innate quality. It's an action. It's a choice they make. And they all make it. And I don't mean cartoon villains, although it applies if that's the limit of your experience with true villainy. What is the one thing that all real, genuine, authentic villains have in common, friends? It took me forever to come around to realize this. It took me forever to see this clearly. The one thing they all have in common is that they vilify all others to achieve their goals. There's a lot of other things we could, we could point to to hang the villainy hat on, their greed, their lust for power, etc. Those are symptomologies, I would ponder, of a deeper corruption. And at the core of that corruption is the corruptive act, for it does corrupt those who engage in it, of vilifying anyone and everyone that stands in their way. That eventually becomes everyone other than the, those who are busy sucking on the teat of their tyranny. That's been my beef with Donald Trump from the get-go. A, a lot of Trump supporters that are getting a little exhausted by the Trump bandwagon but are still clinging on tight love to turn around and say, oh, you're obsessed with with." With Trump, you can't get over. He's out of office. He's not important anymore. We're moving on. When they're clinging tightly, white knuckled to the the obviously brutally manipulative series of false promises that has led them to believe that Trump is some kind of savior, embedded in all of his ideological, rhetorical. Talking points is us versus them vilification. Vilify those who will not suck my dick. Vilify those who will not pledge blind allegiance to me and me alone. He's been like that from the beginning. He's been like that since before he got into politics. He's a narcissistic sociopath with a big, huge fucking ego problem. And an addiction to getting away with things. And that's been obvious since long before he came down the golden escalator. Sorry to transition. This is welcome to your mini segment of Good Morning Trumptopia. My trajectory seemed to shift when I focused there on the Trumptopian example 
of what I'm talking about. But I digress to come or, or go, I, I bring it full circle, right? It's a catch-22, friends, because what are the good guys doing? Take a step back. Take a big step back and ask yourself, what are the good guys doing? They're doing the same thing the bad guys are doing. They're telling you to vilify others. They're, they're distracting you from achieving the deep, intrapersonal, interpersonal, metapersonal, spiritual, ontological realization that there is no us versus them. That those people over there that you're being seduced into vilifying, those people over there are not just just like you. And wildly, uniquely different from you. They literally are you. Whilst living in an individuated experience that's radically separate and different from you. But when I say that they are you, or that you are me, or that we are each other. I mean at the root, base, core, origin of phenomenological experience. Where is that? What does that even mean? That is the the core of the mystery. What am I? Who is that which I am? It is everyone. Or that which is I am is all that I am's. All the different I am's. Uh, and, And that's the... That's the sort of world view. That's the the natural, organic, physiological, phenomenological understanding and comprehension of how the universe works. That the system of mundane reality, the system of oppression for shorthand, the system of profiteering, the system of political um, gerrymandered power struggle, that system of systems does not want you to remember, to relate to, to commune with the core of your being, the raw source of your awareness. But you can, you have the capacity to, you are capable of it, You could be doing that. But they don't want you to. They want you to be busy doing the one thing that all genuine villains throughout history have been guilty of doing. And that is pointing fingers, throwing blame, and vilifying all others. Making you the villain. That's the litmus test for me, folks. That's why I can't get behind that ideology or this ideology. That's why I am not on the left or on the right. That's why I reject participating in that self-indoctrination, that self-limitation. That's why I can survey the vast minefield of controversial treadmills of discussion and distractionary conflict creation and go, huh, I'm not going to engage in any of that. Thank you very much. And that's why I speak relentlessly about this subject. Because we can help ourselves, and we can help each other. In fact, I would argue, I would propose to you for your consideration, I would strongly urge you to realize it is the universal spiritual calling. One of my favoriteest Christmas holiday memes 
is the one with the picture of Jesus in his uh, resurrected glory stepping out of the um, the tomb cave. And the text reads something along... I wish I had it in front of me. It's not... I was inspired by a different thing I saw. I know it's going to be coming up, so I'll be able to read it. Um, uh, it's in it, but, but uh, let me paraphrase it severely, butcher it probably. Uh, it essentially, it is expressing that we are not meant to fret away our life worrying about when and if the Jesus is coming back for a second time. It's about realizing that what Yeshua Christos was speaking about, that what Yeshua Christos and Mary Magdalene were teaching us has to do with our own innate, internal, undeniable, undebunkable, unremovable inner spiritual realm. Our inner spiritual connectivity to that which we cannot perceive with just our eyeballs or just our preliminary five physical senses. That what we are supposed to be manifesting is a reawakening of the Christ within us, the Yeshua Christos energy or consciousness, the Christ consciousness within us, right? And it doesn't have to be about Jesus because it isn't a Christian uh, monopoly, The divine mechanisms of reality have no time, no patience, no truck, and no uh, investment in the ideologies of mankind. No matter how close in some aspects or some level of details those ideologies may be in pointing in the generally right direction. The universe is like, that's adorable. I ain't got time for that shit. The universe does not need to be bothered with ideology. And it's a curiously bizarre contradiction that mankind is addicted to its own ideology because mankind is the effing motherfucking universe in cute, adorable, bipedal form. Um, but I think it's, it's a recursion of complexity, right? Fractals manifest reality through recursive, self-referencing uh, levels of complexity that intensify as they layer on. Um, I'm not making that up. You can go and, and confirm that for yourself, that that is indeed how reality operates at the most fundamental and the most uh, meta-structural levels. But I digress. Um... As we brace ourselves for the the end of the year cycle of human rituals and events, as we brace ourselves for the potential torment, suffering, and chaos that people's lives will be enduring, as we brace ourselves for the cold and the and the uptick of disease all around us as we brace ourselves for the family gatherings and the overindulgence and the merrymaking as we brace ourselves for the renewal and the and the rebooting of our year to year cycle let us 
help each other remember that Jesus was trying to guide us to that inner divinity through practical experience, through spiritual practices. He was not dictating a set of ideological constructs that you must pledge your blind allegiance to and give up your life defending. That's crazy talk. Jesus and Mary were teaching spiritual practices that healed the mind, healed the body, healed the soul, and reminded the practitioner of how to reconnect with their own inner divinity in a powerful, meaningful, tangible way that that helps to rectify and heal and liberate the individual mind from its cages and corruption. And that, dear friends, is the season for the reason. Or the reason for the season, as I spoonerize it. Uh, but I rambled on a bit. Let me, let me invite DJ Z to throw down some digital frequencies for you to percolate those thoughts in your head um, for a hot second. As I thank you for tuning in and checking out. I'm going to keep this a nice short episode as we're still under 30 minutes. This will be our outro song. I got to pick something good. Uh, something that I like. Uh, I don't remember. Some of the problems, we, we create these these audio tracks together and I like remember the titles, but I don't remember what they sound like. Let's try this one. Uh, namaste, friends. Thank you for tuning in. Let's chill for a second before winding things up and closing it out. Twenty-eight minutes and twenty-eight seconds. I just missed it. I'm always too late. I, I never, I never anticipate it. May peace, love, and grooviness blossom in your hearts, dear friends. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to swing on by and visit solo.to forward slash Mr. Zeppo, where you can find links to all my other online projects. This podcast is just the flagship of a, a much larger armada of creative follies. I'm trying to transition from side hustle to primary hustle because the world is all topsy-turvy. Be sure to join me in the not-too-distant future as I do a deep dive into uh, my reactions to Hawkeye and the other MCU television series shows as part of the uh, attempt to ease my way into fulfilling the promise, the vision of doing a whole media review series special specifically about the MCU in depth. Uh, And so that's coming soon. And also, brace yourselves, as I will be spending some time over in Wattpad in the coming days and weeks in anticipation of hopefully cranking out a couple of uh, new installments with a bit of a holiday theme and getting back into the practice of visiting that platform a little bit more often. Come on down and check it out. You can find all these links at solo.to forward slash Mr. Zeppo. Sorry for rambling. Peace out. 3030 on the dot.
Good night, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good day to you all. Be good humans, online and offline. Peace.